This is a snowboarder, this is some concrete, and this is a concrete snowboard. And I recently tried snowboarding for the first time ever after learning this incredible kind of skateboard which emulates snowboarding on concrete. In just four days, we attempted jump 360s over slides at high speed and even went down a black run within 24 hours of first getting on a snowboard. But since that video, a lot of people have been asking me what it's been like to get back onto the concrete after snowboarding for the first time. So this is the story of the transition from snowboard to freeboard. Yo, so welcome back to the Easy Riders channel where we go on adventures around the world testing these incredible skateboards known as freeboards that emulate snowboarding on concrete. Now, as some of you know, I was recently on a trip in the Swiss Alps learning to snowboard and since coming back, I've been trying to get into the groove of going on my freeboard again. And this video is gonna be all about the transition from going from snowboard back to freeboard. One of the things that I realized was I was getting so much practice on the snow, which I wouldn't have otherwise done on the concrete. And by far the biggest one for me has been jump 360s. Now during the trip snowboarding there was a point where one of the ski lifts broke down and we decided to walk over to a little slope and practice jump 360s off a tiny little ramp to the side of the piste. All this practice on the snow really gave me a lot of confidence in the mechanics of doing jump 360s and so I knew that when coming back I had to keep this practice up. The big thing that I learned while snowboarding is that when you do these jump 360s you want to try and spin the upper half of your body to do the 360 and then have the lower part and the hips complete the motion to bring the board back in line with your line of sight. So you'll notice here, the first part of the 360 is really trying to align my line of sight to where I'm gonna land. After this, you just complete the motion with your hips. But it was much easier to do on the snowboard because there really wasn't much fear of crashing. Obviously on the freeboard, if you crash doing a jump 360 on concrete, you do pay the price. But on the snow, the price you pay is a lot lower. And this was pretty massive because there is a spot that I've wanted to clear on a jump 360 for ages, but I've been far too scared to do it it because of the fear of landing on concrete. But when I came back from this trip snowboarding, I really felt like it was now or never to get these jump 360s drilled in. So in the last few days where I've been back on the freeboard, that is what I've been focusing on. And honestly, it has just completely blown me away how not only did the freeboard bring something to snowboarding, but even after a short four day trip snowboarding, there is already an example of snowboarding helping my freeboarding. I really think that this is just one example of many where the snowboard and freeboard form a very symbiotic relationship where learning one thing on one of them helps you learn the same thing on the other. And to be honest, alongside the community, this has got to be one of the most beautiful things about freeboard. And I really think that in the months to come, my jump through 60s are gonna look a lot better than they did before I went snowboarding. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the video for my trip snowboarding was how snowboarding had already taught me something which I could not do on the freeboard. And and that is overslides from switch. For those of you who don't freeboard, an overslide is effectively when you look in one direction while approaching a turn and allow the board to spin out so that you're kind of riding backwards in the turn. This is a very classic freeboard move inspired by snowboarding and finding the right stance can be very difficult especially if you're riding in switch which is the orientation that you're least used to. There's probably a fair few reasons for this but one of the problems lies in trying to figure out the position of the board in order to ride on the correct toe side edge because you need to transition from doing a drift to actually rolling on your toe side as you can see Grimo doing here. And since coming back to the freeboard, it has felt great to try and do these overslides from switch. Landing these overslides is all about finding the right spot on your toe side edge while having this bizarre stance of the overslide. And unless you've got a very wide road with basically no cars, it can really be difficult to have enough time to figure out where this spot is when you're first learning it. This is where snowboarding is completely perfect for learning this trick. Because the hills are so wide, so long, and there are no cars, you have as much time as you need to find the right spot on your toe side edge to do the overslide. So it has been fantastic going back to the freeboard and feeling like I've unlocked a new trick thanks to snowboarding. I should clarify that in a lot of ways what I mean by unlocking the trick is unlocking this sort of overlook trick, not the actual overslides. I haven't had the chance to go to a very tight right turn in order to try it properly, but learning to be able to have my line of sight and my hips be independent is a very big step to learning the actual trick. All right, so one of the last things that I found with snowboarding was that 
that riding in Switch was a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. And this is probably because my Switch riding on the freeboard wasn't good enough. Now I did manage to go down a few blue runs in Switch, but when it got to reds it was definitely too difficult. However, I am certain that it still helped to improve my Switch riding on the snowboard to then transition over to the freeboard. One, for confidence of riding speed. Two, for center basing in Switch on the snowboard is very similar to center wheeling on the freeboard. And just figuring out the actions to do drifts and calves on the snowboard is very similar to that of the freeboard. All right, so if you're a snowboarder and you're looking to freeboard, how difficult is it to make the transition? I think first and foremost is gonna be the psychological barrier from going from snow to concrete is a lot more difficult than going from concrete to snow. However, if you're gonna try and ride a freeboard 5X, I would say that the similarity is quite a lot higher than any of the other freeboards. One of the things I found when I first got on the snowboard was how smooth the edges were. The edges are so smooth. The edges are so smooth. <laughs> Now what I meant by this was how continuous the transition from center to toe side and heel side edges was as compared with the freeboard. Now for sure the 5X has a continuous transition from your toe side and heel side edges, but it really did feel like something new when I first got on the snowboard and that was why I enjoyed it so much. However, don't let this put you off trying the G3R and G3 and freeboard 5 because personally I think they're the best freeboards out there, especially the freeboard G3R. It's a fantastic board. You can use it for literally anything whether that's downhill, freestyle, and other than the base plates, it doesn't break very easily. To be honest, the ideal setup for a snowboarder looking to freeboard would be a wide center wheel and probably the 5X trucks. This is a kind of setup that I'm really trying to make available to everyone, so stay tuned for more information, especially on the wide center wheels. Wider center wheels feel a lot more similar to snowboards, which have a very wide base. And that's not to mention how much better they are for going over rocky roads, especially at high speeds. So yeah, I hope that this has helped you understand the details of what it's like going from snowboard to freeboard. Now obviously I am not a snowboarder who learnt to freeboard, I was a freeboarder who learnt to snowboard. So there are probably a lot of differences that I'm missing out here. However, I hope that this does provide you with a decent amount of information so that if you snowboard and want to learn to freeboard, you'll know what you're getting yourself into. Don't be alarmed if the board feels slightly strange at first. It does eventually click, and at that point, it really does feel like you're snowboarding on concrete. I just cannot describe how true this feeling is. Even when I hadn't snowboarded before, I was still convinced that what I was doing was snowboarding on concrete. I guess in a lot of ways, it was like when you're flying in a dream. It's not like any of us know how to fly. However, you still know what it's like to feel like you're flying in a dream. So in that sense, the freeboard really is a snowboarder's dream. Otherwise, if you're interested in sticking around then definitely subscribe to the channel we're nearing a thousand subscribers which is absolutely crazy i don't think i would have guessed that it would happen like this last year otherwise i hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one <laughs>